Hello everyone, my name is Sven Kruger. I'm with uh, Cube Optics. Uh, welcome today to low cost optical component packaging for chip on board transceivers and co packaged optics. Um, so I hope everything here works out fine. Um, before we dive into the subject, let me give you a quick overview on uh, Huber and Suna and Cube Optics. So, Cube Optics is a um, <clears throat> business unit within the Huber and Suna comms division. Huber and Suna is a global outfit. Uh, they're doing about a billion uh, US dollars revenue. Um, Huber and Suna itself focuses on cables. They have worldwide um, presences, uh, manufacturing and, um, and sales offices in all these brownish regions. Um, and <clears throat> in Cube Optics itself, so we were acquired by Huber and Suna by 2014. Um, we, in contrast to them, do not focus on cables, but to data transmission, data transport in a vertically integrated manner. So we're uh, having our product range from the sub-component or component level. So we do uh, fiber optic components, especially on multiplexes, as well as um, in the passive area, but also in the active area, receiver and transmit optical sub-assemblies up to transceivers and then all the way up to passive systems or carrier grade 19 inch uh, mux splitter boxes or even uh, active transponder cards, amplifiers and so on. And this all packaged in uh, either a standard central office or ruggedized for harsh environment. Today, uh, we wanna talk about the, the sub level here, the, the components and specifically for transceivers. Um, so the packaging in a cost-effective manner. So the traditional way, <clears throat> I've put here a QSFP28 transceiver example. And as you can see inside, so these 100 gig LRs, for instance, they are usually, or the old fashioned manner is to have a gold box uh, package ROSA and TOSA. So here, this is a version from Cubo. Uh, it's a ROSA four times 25 gigabit. <clears throat> so in terms of functionality, it's all it contains all in this red box. So it's a, a fiber receptacle, and then you have the demultiplexer cascade and a free space manner, uh, direct beam bouncing setup, and uh, focusing optics, focusing the beam on photo detectors, detectors transferring light into an electric signal, going through TIAs, and then you have an RF out. <clears throat> um, so all of that is packaged in a hermetically sealed gold box. It's not necessarily the most cost effective way and uh, driven by the demand of especially the hyperscalers uh, to lower and even lower, lower cost. Um, so in the last years, we worked on what we call a WCM. It's a wavelength division multiplexer coupling module, specifically addressing chip on board and co-packaged optics assembly. So in terms of the function, it's just uh, the, this optical part here without any electronics or no PDs and no TIAs and no lasers. It's just uh, the, the, beam, the beam focusing optic, uh, fiber or receptacle and the multiplexer cascade. So this is actually not drawn to scale, but uh, scaling towards each other correctly. So here you see, you have an idea of the, the size of such a device and uh, the intention to use it is that you, um, <clears throat> have a PCB board of the transceiver, so containing all the electronics like CDR and all these chips, and as well non-packaged, uh, simply the PDs or lasers put directly on this PCB board, not in a separate gold box. And so then the coupling module, the WM coupling module is assembled to that in a passive alignment manner. Um, as you've shown here already, it has two, four, whatever, uh, eight channels. It's working not only with PDs, also on the TX side, and it's pretty sim small. Uh, so roughly, that's the bigger one, 40 by 40 by 20 millimeters. And uh, so sitting just in a passive assembled and open normatic ceiling way on the PCB board. So in what do we have inside? Looking a bit closer, um, so taking off the cap, two fuse of the same thing. So you have the input fiber, say this is a, a ROSA version now. And so that is attached to this block. That block is uh, actually, it's a, it's a mirror. And in the front you have the thin film filters. So 
the light comes out of the fiber and hits this what we call a polymer pickle bench structure. It's a precision uh, precision machined and tools and then micro injection molding. And so these have uh, parabolic reflecting optics, which form this beam and steer it towards the, the filter bank. And then you have a zigzag uh, beam bouncing and uh, separating the different lambdas. And then in this POB, you also focus downwards or steer the beam downwards and focus it to the uh, here photo detector sitting on this PCD board. Um, a different view. And this is uh, no fancy unproven technology. It's actually it was applied in, in many hundred thousands of um, 100 G. G base CFPs, the first gens, they all contain passive muxes, mostly from us. And um, here the same technology applied. Of course, now here with fibers, and here it's it's without the fibers, so it's a and no housing. Um, well, summary of the features. Well, we everyone uses different PDs or LDs and silicon photonics. So everyone has this different um, grid on spacing the, these active elements. So typical array grid sizes, what we see in the mechanical spacing is 250 to 750 micron. However, we could adapt also to something in between. These three, which what we have not on stock, but what we do regularly, uh, it can be two or eight channels or two, three, four, and so on up to eight channels. Of course, we can exchange the filters easily. So it's SWM, LAN WM, CWM, MWM, whatever you like. Um, it can be TX or RX. So it's a uh, TOSA or ROSA functionality. It can be even TX and RX in, in one device. So um, transmission over one single fiber upstream and downstream. Uh, it can be single or multi mode PDs. It's also, we have designs for silicon photonics or other PICs. And uh, given the very small size, it's not only very well enabling a uh, chip on board, but especially the, these co-packaged optics where you have thousands of channels uh, having to be spaced next to the ASIC. Um, well, there's a chip for traceability inside for production. If you want. It's a benefit. Um, it's a very low cost design. So we're very price competitive. Um, you have a a very plug and play type assembly. So it's easy to automate for the transceiver manufacturer. Uh, it enables this high packaging density. You can put a lot of these coupling modules side by side in front of an ASIC, for instance. It offers a very high performance, very low insertion loss, very high isolation. And uh, in contrast to AWGs, we have a perfect Gaussian beam shape. Uh, so it's a real single mode beam characteristic for single mode applications. and. A high coupling performance, so especially addressing the further reach uh, transceivers like the FRs and the LRs and ERs. Last but not least, some examples of the variations we have. Of course, the beam angle, for instance, uh, towards the LDPD is always adapted so, uh, to optimize uh, return loss. We here see a variation of the different uh, PD or LD grids, so 250 to 750 micron pitches, CWM, LWM. This is one of the latest, our low rider. It's especially flat. It's less than a millimeter. And that's for the PCB backside uh, usage. And here are some other variants. So higher channel counts, BD version, single uh, multi-mode, and uh, TX and RX in a bubble pack. OK. so. Thank you for your attention, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Please feel free to send me an email, or even better, come to our booth. So, yeah, paste the link.